challenges that they present. Absolutely. Up until about 2006, we were always in just sports stadiums or on, on fields. Right. And then they sort of made a decision that, no, we're going to put the finals in harbours, in town centres, in city centres, in on beaches. And I think it's the, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Canals in Copenhagen. Yes, absolutely. I was there with my girlfriend competing in that World Cup final, and that was an interesting place to shoot. I am so sorry I missed that. I would love to have been there for that. But I'm glad to be here for the men's recurve bronze medal match between Korea and France. France on the right in the dark blue jerseys and on the left the team from Korea the men from Korea Im Dong Hyun, Ho Jin Yek and Kim Bubaman Kim Bubaman on the right Im Dong Hyun we've seen him already today picking up we a have. medal you see quite a lot of him and on the left is Ho Jin Yek those three topped Turkey by 14 points defeated the Ukraine by two and then were upset by India in an upset that had people really buzzing. Now here's the team from France, Gail Prévost, Thomas Facheron, and Romain Girouy. And like I said, a European record, record breaking team as well. The French defeated Chinese Taipei, then the People's Republic of China before falling by four points to Great Britain, the team that we will see momentarily. Absolutely. I know you're looking forward to that, Mike. I am. I'd agreed to commentate before I even realized my teammates were going to be in there. So getting to commentate <laughs> with my own friends is uh, fantastic. They really did have a great performance to get there. So Here's the step ladder that shows you the lead up to the semifinals and then the bronze and gold medal matches. And this should be a great one between France and Korea. Gail Crevaux. I also think French are going to think, the French team are going to think, you know, one thing to be in a bronze match, but then to find out you're in a bronze match against Korea. Korea. Not what they were expecting. Not what they want. Not what they were expecting. Im Dong Young. Ah! Gold medalist in Antalya yesterday and today. As he teamed up with Lee Sung Jin just moments ago in the recurve mixed team and scored a victory over Italy. And there's another 10. Yeah. So the message has been sent. I think, I think uh, it's been sent loud and clear. Here is Ojin Yek, who took a silver medal at stage two in Turkey last year. And an eight point, so. Maybe it's not gonna be a, a whitewash after all then. Maybe, maybe there is cracks in that armor. There's a lot of fight in the French. Gilles Prévost, who goes about six foot four. I, I was training with him yesterday and I pulled his arrows out from the target and they're like four inches longer than mine. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm six foot one. I, I don't want to have short arrows by any means. He is a tall young man and he finds the middle of the target, almost the middle of the target. It's a 10. I think you'll say it's close enough. <laughs> and a nine. For Thomas for Choron. Now Romain Girouy. Ranked eighth in the world. And that's the why. That's the reason he's ranked eighth in the world. He was part of the team that took the silver medal in Shanghai and the first stage of this year's World Cup tour. Sadly, none of the British archers could attend that event. We were busy at home in our own Olympic selection process, so we had to, had to give that one a miss. But we'll be going to the, the third leg in uh, Ogden shortly. Kim Bubaman, who lost the bronze medal yesterday to his teammate Kim Woo Jin. <laughs> but he's on target right here. Yes, that was a good bronze match. Kim versus Kim. Now, Oh Jin Yek, who was on the silver medal men's team with Korea here in Turkey last year at stage two. So that is a strong, strong start for Korea. A couple of eights thrown in there with four tens. I was going to say it's still it's a strong start, but. There's no reason to think they're going to come out of this end on top. 
Three ball. Three ball. Three ball. Not if France keep on doing that. So Prevo, just a teenager. Allez, jusqu'au bout, tout droit. Propre. C'est bien, Tom. Bonjour. Allez, Romain, 30 secondes. Getting some instruction there from his coach. Allez, on s'engage. So France with a chance to take the lead after the first end. Roman with an eight though, okay. and that ties it up. Ties it up. So the opportunity was there to take the lead, but France has got to be pleased there in this match, tied at 56. I think that's a fair performance for sure. See the Koreans are still discussing the wind and a few more clouds rolling in, and the wind, I think, steadily picking up. I often wish I could understand Korean, because you see them talking amongst themselves. You just, you just love to know what they're, they're saying, Yeah, huh? we often say we're a bit at a disadvantage. Speaking English, we can, oh, we can stand there on the field talking to our coach, and our coach can communicate back to us, and everyone on the field knows exactly what I'm saying, <laughs> and they know what he's saying. But the Koreans can shout things at each other, and... Apart from their own teammates, I get the feeling that not too many other people know what they're know saying. Know what they're saying. <laughs> and they're not about to tell you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> not going to share that information. I had a Korean Classified. Coach. Yeah, I had a Korean coach for four years, but I still only got very, very basic Korean. Im Dong Hyung. Anxious to start this second end. Well, Here in the men's bronze medal match. Recurve competition. Our ninth match of the day. I One more to go. I actually had to help him out at the London Test event. It got halfway through the week. He'd shot his world record on the on the qualifying day, and then he'd broken some arrows on the practice field because he'd been grouping so tight. Mm -hmm. In one afternoon, he'd broken four arrows, and he was getting down, so he wasn't going to have enough. So you lent to him some arrows. Week, so I had to phone around and my local shop. Found him some arrows, shipped him down. Yeah. You're a good man. I'm a kid, but maybe I'm too Mike good. Garrett, I don't know. You're a good man. <laughs> now that you know what, that's what sports should be about. It should be about sportsmanship. It is, but I was amazed that he got into that situation. You'd have th I'd have thought the great Korean team would have uh, a whole stock room of arrows <laughs> back at the hotel, but he just broke a few just because sometimes if you group them right together, you can just smash them back. And yeah, he broke a load of arrows in the afternoon and. Yeah, got low. Eight, nine, and ten for Korea to start off the second end. And France with an opportunity. We were tied at 56 after the first six arrows. Can they take it? Trevo with a nice shot. That's fair. Three nines will keep the tie. Trevo, the winner of a World Cup team gold medal in Turkey last year. Et tout droit. Trying to repeat, and that certainly will help the cause will. of the Frenchman. You know, I would already think the Korean team aren't exactly thrilled about the potential of getting a bronze medal, but if they end up in fourth place, less there, thrilled. there's going to be some questions being asked at the coaches there for sure. Okay. So an eight. eight. Tied for three. So it's shaping up as the closest match so far in the recurve competition. In, in the center. There's a reason. There's a reason he wins all these shoots. Practice, practice, practice. Consistency, consistency, consistency as well. It's just, and that's what you get from practice. And they say he has impaired vision. Yeah, you, you'll read some press reports, they'll say that he's blind. But I think, <laughs> as we can see, he's walking around unaided. I think blind is a bit of a stretch. But yeah, he's definitely visually impaired, which is a good example, because so often I have people from people who see me, oh, you, do I treat you must have good eyes. And I'm like, no, it's really not that important. And he's my, uh, he's my demonstration now. <laughs> I can just say, well, actually, Im Dong Yong, he's yeah, technically no, visually impaired. <laughs> and one of the greatest archers going on the planet right now. So 56 points again for Korea here in the second end. They had 56 in the first end. 
112. Active. No mean feet. Pop. Revo looks like it might I think it's going to be a nine. A nine, but yeah. Normal. Allez, grand. So right now, France needs to shoot two tens just to keep pace. And that won't do it. But it's not a bad shot. You know, that's that's what makes it so tough. You can shoot perfectly good and fall behind. All right, now the most experienced archer on the French team. Roman with a nine. So the lead stands at two for Korea. See, if you hang with the Koreans, sometimes they just turn on a little bit of genius and just for four or four or five hours, they'll just drop down a load of tens and then you're left trailing and it's hard to pull them back. But you see, again, they're discussing the wind, what to do, where to aim. And if one makes a change with their sight, do all make a change? Or is that an individual decision? I would think it's an individualist decision, but if you look at that team, if they don't trust their opinion of the other archer on the team, I'd be very, very surprised. You're out there on your own, pal. Yeah, I think I think you should, <laughs> Go for it. You should be trusting in your teammates when you've got a team that strong. So Gail Trebo getting some instructions from his coach there's last also, year. There's also a lot of Koreans who don't move their sight. They just aim off. Oh, okay. So if they know they need to move the sight a millimeter instead, they'll just aim over on the right-hand side and just let it drift in. There's, there's a lot of people go with that theory. Make that adjustment that way. Yep. And then they can change it maybe as they're aiming. If they feel a gust coming in, you can correct it straight away. France shooting first on target two. Official scores are in, and it was 54 points for France in that second end, 56 for Korea. So France down by two. We'll shoot first to start the third end. Halfway stage, so they can still get it back. And and that's a great way to start. There you go. On the line, touching that line, that means it is a 10. That's in. As long as it's touching that line, it counts. It doesn't matter by how small an amount. A little bit more inside the line. So France trying to make the comeback. Jusqu'au bout. On reste dessus, propre. Ooh, that one, um, right on the line. Yeah. So there's two that are on the line that'll have to be checked. I think one's definitely in that last shot. I don't know. As it flexed, it look it was in, out, in, out. So I don't know where it settled up. That one's definitely in. Yeah, no one's gonna argue on that one. Kim Buberman. I just love the way he doesn't look like he's rushing at all. The fact he's on a stopwatch doesn't seem to be concerning him. He's not in a hurry. Of course not, he's shooting second. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The guy in third might be moving a bit more. So after the eight, Ojin Yak. With a 10. Well, the worst case scenario is the French have equaled them on that end, so they travel by two, or I'm tempted to think they might have a 10 10 10. And if that's true, then we're tied. Yeah. And we just don't know it. Too true. Super, too great concentration great by shot. Gail Prevost. Grand tout de suite. Thomas Forcheron. Et ça va au bout. Actif. The French coach still giving instructions, even though the shooting, even though the full draw, fantastic, another shot. French shot well in Shanghai, took a silver medal there as a team. Fighting for bronze here in Antalya, Turkey. He's got plenty of time. 
Sexy there, yeah. Omar. Yes. Now that, I think that one's out. So yeah. my guess is he's got a 59. No, oh, France have got a 59. <laughs> but we'll have to wait for official clarification on that. Yeah, the best it's a 59. Yeah. And Korea's just going to assume that it is a 59 for France and just keep shooting 10s. Yeah. And their rule number one, take nothing for granted. Absolutely. Never assume. Well, in some ways, whatever your opponent's done should be irrelevant. Because every time you want to step onto the line and do the best shot possible, and it doesn't matter whether you have a 10-point lead or 10 points behind, the psychologist will always be telling you, you just want to do the best shot you can. And it's true. That's what we all try to do. However, human nature being <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Too right. Ojinyek with a 10. Okay, so we've got definitely got a 57 from Korea, but it's just France that we need clarification on. So now they'll get out the magnifying glass. <laughs> and France, a little bit of an anxious moment for them right now as they wait to see whether those two nines are going to be marked as nines or tens. It is, and especially when you wait, that judge's decision might be deciding whether you're world champion or not. The best thing I can do is just assume the worst case scenario, and mm -hmm. then if you get a pleasant surprise, fantastic. But never work on the assumption that it's in and then get the disappointment. Always assume the worst and then hope for the best. Hope for the best. That's been the motto of my life. Okay. <laughs> well, that's why you've done so well. 169 out of a possible 180 for Korea. As again, they continue to communicate with one another. And that doesn't look like casual talk. That definitely, to me, looks like instruction. Yeah. Im is uh, and he's a taking good, leadership right and now. I'm going to say, if you're going to take instructions off anyone on this field, Im would be a good place to start. Now, we just saw that score, but I'm not sure if that's official or not. I don't think it is. I think we're still waiting to find out about those two shots that were on the line. Got some clouds coming over. That's a bit uncharacteristic. So Korea leads by one. I think one of the shots was on the line. One of the yep. shots was not. Yep. So that takes one point off of the lead for Korea. So they pull one back, and like we said earlier, it's not often you get to pull pull a point back on Korea. So it's a one-point match as we head down the stretch. So some more suspense and drama here on the Mediterranean shores of Antalya, Turkey. French team having some very uh, vocal supporters. Actif et propre, on va la chercher jusqu'au bout. C'est bien, Titi. Fantastic. Big, big shot for Gail Prévost. Yep. Thomas Forcheron. Trying to match his teammate oh, and yeah. just outside that 10 ring with a 9. By no means a bad shot though. It'll Simple. keep you in the game. Roman Giroui. Et actif jusqu'au bout. Solide. Et on reste dessus. Jusqu'au bout, Romain. And another nine. Yeah. A reasonable end, but it could just mean you fall another point behind. Possibly two. At this point, you really have to be bringing it and applying the pressure to the Koreans. You don't want to give Korea an inch because they'll take it. Oh, or maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe they'll give it back. <laughs> an uncharacteristic shot for Im Dong Young. It is. He didn't do many of them when he shot his world record. Nope. Kim Bubaman, who was ranked 111th in the world going to Shanghai, but saw his ranking climb to 59th after Korea reached the bronze medal match in stage one. So an eight and a nine, and Korea mm. presenting some opportunities for France. They are. Although I say that, let's see what the shot from Ojin Dick is like to tie. Yeah. Yeah. 
So midway through this fourth and perhaps final end, we're tied at 196. We are. This is exciting. So anybody's match with three arrows to go. These are the tough shots, so these are the shots you make it or you don't. Nine. 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 Okay. So a nine normally for I'd Gail say, Normally I'd say that might not be enough, but the way Korea is shooting this afternoon, it might be. Just don't know. Another nine. Solid chance. See if one man can get a ten to keep that pressure on. 15. Allez, simple et jusqu'au bout actif. Giroui. 10. With 10 seconds on et the clock. Dessus. Let's it fly. Cinq. With 5 seconds. Eight. And it's an 8. See. Could be costly. It could. It's a good match. But in these conditions and the way Korea are not on top form this afternoon, then maybe. Yes, maybe. And just as you say that, Im Dong Hyung. I was going to follow it with maybe not good enough. Maybe not. Kim Buberman with a nine. Excellent shot. So now all they need is a seven to tie. Yeah. Anything better? And the gold? I or excuse me, the bronze is theirs. I wouldn't be batting against Korea at this point. Oh Jin Yek to try to wrap up the victory. I'm sure he will. And take home the bronze Ten medal, points. and they do. Bullseye for the bronze. So Korea. Good match. Good match. Pulling this one out with three arrows to go. It was tied at 196. But over the last three arrows, the Koreans, a little bit tougher than the team from France, but a great performance by the Frenchman, nonetheless. I think they'll they'll take a lot from that performance moving into the next next competition, which for France, the next competition will be the European Championships in Amsterdam before they then go on to the last World Cup in Ogden. Which are, yes, and those European Championships are what quite a few of the archers here in Turkey are really pointing towards Absolutely. right now. Yep. Yeah, the Continental Championships are always important for the teams, always important for your, your federations. So, uh, and also a bit of a test before you then go to the final World Cup in Ogden and then of course on to London. The main event as it was. So the trio of Frenchmen Coming close, but not quite close enough to obtain that bronze medal. Korea, which was upset by India, one of the big upsets this week. They lost in the... Uh, I think